Hey, what is going on guys? Dr. D here, bringing you a recent war recap from a re uh, an arranged war that we just had with LexCorp. Um, just real quick, I want to point out, uh, these guys are on Twitter. Um, if you want to go and check them out, a very solid group of guys over there. Uh, there is their Twitter page. Um, it's at LexCorp Clash. Uh, and right before the war, they... Um, threw up a tweet saying that they were getting ready to uh, smoke out some bees, and as you can see, things didn't quite work out for them the way that they had hoped. Uh, nonetheless, great group of guys over there. Uh, all right, without any further ado, let's just hop in and check out some of the um, war, uh, war attacks. So here are the basic war statistics. You can see that um, Swarm was able to to put up 21 triples and LexCorp was able to put up 13 triples. Uh, we'll look at the bases in just a second, but a lot of that came down to misses on Town Hall 9s uh, on both sides. Um, let's look at the enemy uh, clan here. So LexCorp, they're a level 11 clan. You can see they've been around for a while, 247 wins. Just by comparison, Swarm has got about 100 less. Um, and uh, a really solid group of guys over there. They also have a YouTube channel, and I will put a link to their channel in the description. Um, they've got some great content over there. I would really encourage you to go over and check them out. And if you're, if you're looking for a good clan um, that you're able to, to move into fairly quickly and start learning some good three-star strategies, I would really recommend these guys, a, a very solid group. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the bases quickly. Um, if we start on, on their side, you can see that we, we got uh, two stars on their number one, and that was with a Town Hall 11 attack, not a Town Hall 10. Um, we did get a couple of triples on Town Hall 10s, but these were uh, triples by our Town Hall 11s. Uh, this is a 9.5, so, uh, and, and Hink is also a 9.5. But uh, then as we scroll down through the nines, you'll see one, two, three, three misses. Uh, we, we left three Town Hall 9s open on this side. Um, over here, uh, roughly this, the same uh, situation on the Town Hall 11s. Um, they had a couple of Town Hall 10 triples. These were also uh, bully hits by Town Hall uh, 11s, just like ours were. Um, the difference really, though, came at Town Hall 9, where they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten open Town Hall 9s. Uh, and that makes a big difference. Um, ten open Town Hall 9s. They clear those 9s and that puts them at 23 triples and uh, easily um, uh, takes the win probably by uh, at least two stars. So um, being able to clear those 9s is, is a very important piece of, of any war as we know. All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, some of the war attacks. We're going to start at the bottom, as I, as I like to do. Uh, we're only going to look at Town Hall 9 attacks today. Uh, this is because the, the Town Hall 10 attacks were all done by Town Hall 11s, um, and so we're just going to focus on uh, some of these cooler attacks. Now, 29, or some, some of the Town Hall 9, cooler Town Hall 9 attacks, uh, was hit by Link. Link is a fairly new um, core member of Swarm, and... He's coming in with an attack that I've been seeing a lot in Invicta. Um, I don't know what exactly to call it. We, I've been calling it the Gobo Drag. Um, but you can see he's got six dragons, two golems, a um, couple of baby dragons, and he's going to have bowlers in the CC. Uh, mostly, I've, I've seen Jamie doing this attack a lot, and uh, I know that uh -huh in uh, Swarm has been doing this attack a fair amount. Um, at any rate... Uh, start setting his funnel here, uh, have a, uh, Tesla, a Tesla farm that pops right there. Uh, this was a cleanup attack. He knew that the Tesla farm was going to be there. I'm pretty sure it was a cleanup attack. Um, so uh, gets those golems uh, just sitting on that Tesla farm, and they're really just getting eaten alive at this point. Finally drops a jump. In comes king, queen, and bowlers. Uh, he's got a nice funnel set, though, at this point. And so the goal here is to get everything in to get at those three or four air defenses as quickly as possible. And the, the uh, single jump actually does that, right? It gives you access to every single one of those air defenses. Ugh, big bomb there that can do some uh, pretty hefty damage to bowlers, but uh, still has, looks like three or maybe four of his bowlers up. Uh, two air defenses are down. There goes the third and the fourth. 
and he has started his dragons over here. At this point, there's only a couple of defenses left that can even target air troops. Um, unfortunately, they're uh, they're stuck on these kind of high HP buildings, but he's able to get a rage down to push through that. So doing this this uh, strategy, uh, the way that I've seen Jamie do it most often is is using a jump. Uh, two rages and a heal and, and keeping that one of those rages specifically for dragons. Obviously it works best if you're able to get the um, uh, a base that has the expo expos on ground and air defenses that are kind of clustered nicely so that you can take those out quickly with your bowlers. Uh, he's actually so he lost one bowler right when he jumped in there. Um, he's still got uh, four at this point which is pretty good. Only three defenses right now that can even target air troops. Um, every one of his uh, dragons are still up. They're just eating this base alive, and that is about it. Has not even used his queen's ability yet. Um, we'll, we'll fast forward here. This is Tree Stars in the bag. Nice job, Link. Very cool attack. All right, we are going to move up to Silky Joe. Um, so, Silky Joe hit number 28, and I talked a little bit about Silky Joe in the last uh, Invicta recap, because he also has an, an, uh, an account in Clash United, and, and in his first uh, night in tryouts, he said, hey, I'm also facing Invicta in my, with my other account, which is interesting. Um, you know, we're, we're actually uh, fairly cool with that, as long as you don't have an account on both sides of a war, uh, then, then it's fine. So he's, he's coming in here with the Queen Walk. Um, as, if you look at his army composition, he's got a couple of P.E.K.K.A.s, uh, he had six healers, and five, um, five Valkyries, and, and he likes to throw a Witch in there, which I haven't seen with the P.E.K.K.A. Smash as much. Actually, I've only seen him do it, uh, with, with a Witch in there, but I like it, I like this, I like this approach. Uh, gets the Clan Castle pull, um, unfortunately... Uh, the clan castle has uh, a dragon in it, and it immediately uh, goes towards the troops that cannot be targeted, uh, that, that are, are unable to target air troops, but double poisons, and that dragon, uh, baby dragon is gone, and the P.E.K.K.A. smash is underway. Um, one of the great things about this P.E.K.K.A. smash is that uh, those P.E.K.K.A.s have such high um, hit points that... Uh, it's, it's easy to keep them alive for a long, long time, even once the healers are gone. So you can see that uh, the, the P.E.K.K.A. over there actually lost its healer quite a while back. And it's still alive, still plugging away. Um, he's, he's mostly worked through this base at this point. Uh, the healers from the Queen have moved over and, and latched onto that other P.E.K.K.A. And when you've got four healers on a, on a P.E.K.K.A., that thing is going to last forever. It then just becomes a question of time, especially when all, once all of the um, air defenses are down. Uh, we're going to speed this up because uh, this is basically game over at this point. He, he throws down that final rage, not that it was really needed. Um, and uh, healers then heal up that Queen, and it's, uh, it's GG. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, Silky Joe. All right. What do we have next? Baza. Um, Baza hit number 27. And I've said this in the past. I, I love these attacks. There's a couple of videos of me doing these attacks. But Baza's coming in with... Um, it's actually a quad, not a penta la loon, but a quad la loon. Um, now watch what he does here. We were talking a lot about this beforehand, and he's brought four quakes and he waited for the queen to get right by that air defense and he dropped those quakes and she still has just a sliver of health. So he's a little bit concerned. He This was not a fresh hit. He knew that there was a hound in the CC but he thought well if I can get four of these things taken out and get the queen taken out then it's easy. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of uh, feeding in these 22 loons uh, with four tanking hounds to work work around the base, and basically nothing is going to touch it, especially or, uh, touch him, especially with those expos on ground. Um, unfortunately, that queen does live. Uh, you'll see here in a second; it's not going to matter. She winds up getting taken out anyway by, I believe, by pups, um, and and eventually, actually, uh, Bazu's queen, or or maybe, 
yeah, Bazu's queen is going to work her way over into the middle of the base and wind up pulling the CC. Uh, not that it really matters. She pops that CC right at the end of the raid, but uh, he's moving in now on the final air defense, and right at the perfect moment that Max Hound pops, he's got lots of pups out there doing cleanup. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Looks like maybe 14 loons. Uh, nope, 12 loons and still 4 in the bag. So he's doing pretty good as far as that goes. Uh, queen now starts targeting some of those loons. And in comes the queen, the enemy, or the uh, <laughs> his queen that winds up pulling this CC hound. And so while everything else is doing cleanup over here, uh, his queen is busy working on this CC hound, as are a bunch of pups, right? It there's, it's just winds up being a huge distraction. Fortunately, he hadn't, didn't, hadn't had to use his queen's ability yet. Uh, pops it once that those pups pop, or the hound pops, and that is it. GG. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Bazu. Uh, next, we are going to look at Hannibal. So Hannibal hit number 26. Um... Hannibal is another, uh, he's a recruit right now, he's very, very good at what he does. I was a little bit concerned here. He brought 14 hogs, and uh, one of them he dropped right off the bat uh, to take out the uh, Tesla Tower up there, or the, yeah, random, or troll Tesla Tower. Uh, at any rate, you can see this is a uh, stoned hobo, um, a.k.a. the Cheatham. And so... There we go, wall broke in, all three golems are in, jump is going to come down in just a second, and funnel is set, it's a very nice funnel. As soon as that last mortar goes down, he sends in these uh, bowlers, he's going to rage them up in just a moment here once they take this jump. There we go, and this raid is on, and he is just tearing things up, and you can see he's he, he is very kind of cautious with these hogs, only sends them in on distracted defenses. He's only sending in two at a time. Uh, unfortunately, four wind up on a mortar there. I don't think that was planned. Um, but you can see all of these defenses are distracted down here, and those those hogs are just working their way around. And that is it. Two defenses left, one defense left, and it is cleanup time. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Hannibal. All right, who do we have next? Um, Adam. So, Adam hit number 18. I thought this was interesting. Um, we're getting to the point where bowlers are used in the CC for almost everything. And we've, we've seen now, you know, the, the Bolalo and the um, Stoned Hobo are, are, are being used quite a bit. Uh, this is a little bit different. So this is a shattered Gobaho with bowlers in the CC. And so he starts setting his funnel here. And I remember when he was talking about this, um, he, he originally had no wall breakers. Then he decided he would bring some wall breakers, probably because we talked him into it. Uh, I actually think that he was right. He probably did not need any wall breakers because he just uses Valks to rip through that second wall anyway. They probably could have done that through the first wall while the... Um, Golems were tanking. At any rate, it doesn't matter. In with the bowlers. Valks have ripped through that wall. They're, they're aggroing on that king. There they get through. Um, and they start tearing things up. Jump comes down. Uh, perfect jump placement. Uh, heals them up right there. Bowlers are continuing to do massive work in there. Oh, lost, the, lost those two bowlers over to the right. But queen gets hung up on... A hound, and I tell you what, hounds in the CC have become a, a real pain again. It seemed like for a while there, people were getting away from it, but um, it's it's becoming a, a really, really difficult CC to handle just because of the time issue. Um, at any rate, uh, hogs are now trickling in. You can see that all of his all of his valks are actually gone at this point, um, and this is what happened. I mean, this happens even with um, the old gobahos, right? The you see those uh, valks start to disappear at the end of the raid, and you've got 12 or 15 hogs that wind up finishing your raid up, and that's exactly what happens here. 
fortunately, he's still got a couple of bowlers over there that are doing some work on some of those um, high storages. These hogs hit up these last two point defenses, it's Teslas, that, and that is it. It is tree stars in the bag, uh, two swag spells, dark spells, and a, a swag queen's ability. So a very, very nice attack. Great job, Adamantium. All right. Let's move on to our last attack. And this was on 14 by Riggle. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Riggle is an alt account. He also has... A, um, his, his main account, at least in this family, <laughs> this guy has a few different accounts, but um, in, uh, in the 2.0 family, his main account is uh, Captain Sparrow, and he's, he's in Invicta with me, and so, uh, and I, I gave him a hard time in the last <laughs> Invicta replay because he uh, wound up taking two low bases, but no, a very solid guy, great attacker, um, and, and who wouldn't love having your alt account with 30-30 heroes? Uh, Anyway, he's coming in with a, um, a queen walk, and as you can see down here, he's got um, a couple of hounds, and I'm pretty sure it is actually a third hound in the CC. Test wall breaker comes in, and then a few wall breakers with a, a giant tanking for them there. Uh, gets his king down, and his queen is coming in here and slowly gets that CC pulled and is able to take out the enemy queen. Misses on that rage just a little bit. Queen needs to take a step forward and there we go. Uh, she takes that step forward, finishes off the CC, finishes off the enemy queen and at this point he can start that air attack and here it comes. Um, first hound is down, second hound is down, following in with those loons very closely and some uh, hay spells to keep those things moving through there as fast as possible. Uh, this is, um, hay spells are, are really important when it comes to doing these queen walk lalos because the, the queen portion tends to take so much time. Note that he still has not used his queen's ability. Uh, got a couple of hounds there on that final air defense. I don't think either of those actually pop. We'll see here in just a second. Um, finally pops his queen's ability just trying to get her through that wall and that is it so a bit overpowered he brought three hounds only got one of those hounds to pop a really really great attack um, would have been nice if, if a couple more of those hounds would have popped but his queen just did so much work uh, that the only thing left to really target those hounds was air defenses and uh, without additional Teslas or something uh, especially with the Max Hound. Those things just last forever. But That is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Riggle, a.k.a. Captain Sparrow. So, that is it for the attacks. Um, this was a, a, a great arranged war. Um, I'm looking forward to giving these guys a, uh, an opportunity at revenge in the future. And this is Dr. D uh, signing off and seeing Clash Hard.